but I mean this like at Richard Gage says the those buildings coming down understanding that is sixth grade physics we're not talking about we don't really need the experts that really understand it although it helps out and it's nice it's 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 really it's really it's really good that we have the uh, experts on our side including architects and engineers including um, the scientists who, who uh, published the active thermitic material paper <laughs> Something's wrong here. We, we, that makes sense for me to talk more. So, yeah, you, yeah. I will, you, he was trying to ask a question all during so. Yes, I, I wanted to get, give you a, a, re, a recently published paper. It's, a, it's about a active thermitic material that was found in the dust from the World Trade Center. And so my question to you had to do with the scaling up your experience of the, the classroom to a, so, a social level in terms of having to unlearn or relearn things that we may have learned. Uh, learned an untruth about in terms of how these buildings came down and what are the s sort of social blockages or political blockages for a civil society to, to reface things. So my, my feeling is that, uh, you know, I don't know in broad sociological terms, but that's learn relearning. We do know quite a lot about about what's called misconceptions or changing conceptions and, and what's required for the human brain to go through that process. Process. And I, I don't have time to explain it all now, okay. but it, there is a literature out there. All right, thank you. Will you take a look, a look sure. at that and maybe respond yes, to it? Okay. And I can't also, promise okay. I'm going to respond. I get it. Okay. And there's also a pamphlet from architects and engineers for 9-11 truth. There's almost a thousand of them. All right, thank you. Do you, uh, let's catch him on the way out. But solving this kind of problem is localizing where you need, you know, where it's Thank you, sir. Yeah. 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 Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you for okay. time. So Do you have an opinion on how those buildings came yes. down? Yes. Have you no looked at the... No, I, no opinion. No comment. No opinion. <laughs> that was a, the uh, Nobel uh, Prize winner in physics from 2001, Carl, uh, Carl Wieman, or Wyman. And his presentation was all about the way, effective ways of teaching. And so I wanted to, to scale it up to the, the level of society as, as a classroom. And why, how is it that the, you know, this massive event of the destruction of these buildings can be sort of swept under the rug by the entirety of civil society. You know, because if they, I think it was Voltaire that said, if they can make you believe absurdities, they can, they can make, you, make you do cruelties. And that's a paraphrase, but it's a similar situation. If, if, we, if, if, if our knowledge base can be hijacked and, and they can tell us that Bin Laden stood down the laws of physics on 9-11, then uh, the, all the physics departments should shut down. So, except it'd be better if they would actually open up and deal with the knowledge and assert their own responsibility in our larger society. That scientists have a crucial role to play in politics, especially when there's, there's, there's living people's uh, uh, existences at stake, as there are at this point. And as the 9-11 major lie uh, that we were told has uh, caused the death of thousands, of thousands of people on that day and beyond. So it's time for civil society to get it together, and uh, they, like in Pakistan, when all the all the judges, you know, walked out, we need the physics professors to get together and say no, the laws of physics were not stood down on 9/11, and I don't care what Bush or Cheney told us or what Obama continues to tell us. So 
that that's basically what that was about. And he was interesting. He was n very non-committal. <laughs> he wouldn't want to go either way. It's very hard to find someone um, to com to actually defend the uh, NIST story on those buildings coming down in a public manner. But it's also hard to find those courageous people who will assert what they they know an apple to be an apple, and that those buildings were blown blown up. So. That's, that's what we need. Put these papers in the hands of all, every professor that you know who's involved in the sciences um, and uh, all the architects and engineers that you know and so that there can be a, a, a force buzz around it and then, you know, it's point in the fact there's almost a thousand architects and engineers coming out so that they won't feel as, as nervous. It's the same thing with the celebrities, you know, when one celebrity pokes their head up they get, they get smashed in the, in the mainstream media. So it's probably similar in the academic realm when you're dealing with difficult scientific truths. Is that uh, you know at first uh, the patriot of scientific truth is a, is a, is a scarce man, scorned. But then when uh, you know more join him, other you know others will join him. Uh, to paraphrase Mark Twain. So that's what we need. We need the the, the movement for people to be vocal ab about asserting what they know and 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 asserting that no matter what the politicians tell us. Science still matters, especially when we base uh, issues of war and peace on, on it. So um, that, that's sort of what, what that was. Let's wrap it up. All right, peace. <laughs>